Good afternoon folks, welcome to Visor Down and more importantly, welcome to Monte Blanco in Spain for the launch of Ducati's new 2022 Street Fighter V2. <laughs> Now I shouldn't really have to explain too much about what the ethos and what this bike is all about. Really Ducati are stating that they're bringing the fight formula of the V4 and they're just making it a bit more of an accessible package on a couple of different fronts um, and a more sort of easy to ride, road biased but still good on the track, naked um, bikes. We've got the 955cc Super Quadro engine which is shared across a few of the Ducati models at the moment. In this form, it's pushing out a shade under 150 brake horsepower, um, which has been plenty on road and just about enough on the track here at Monte Blanco, which is quite a wide, fast sweeping circuit. Uh, we've got about 75 um, foot pound of torque from the engine and you've got all of the bells and whistles of the Ducati Street Fighter V4 in terms of the electronics, the IMU control, the wheelie control, slide control, all of that stuff is still locked in there in that TFT. Um, and it is now mated to what is effectively the Panigale chassis, uh, sorry, Panigale V2 chassis engine, um, and so on and so forth. So, I'm going to talk about the way this thing handles, because I've already spoken about the engine just then, and uh, the handling of this thing is one of the things that's really impressed me on road and track. So, Unlike the V4 or the V4S, we have got shower big piston forks that are specifically set up for this bike. We've got a Saks rear shock absorber and a Saks steering damper. I've been actually really, really impressed with not just the agility of the bike, but also the ride quality of it. it is, it's handled these roads really, really well. I mean, the roads around here, there were some that were billiard table smooth and there were some others with some sort of ripples on the on the apex of the corner and the forks and the rear shock just did a really really good job of of soaking all of that up i was trying to think whether or not ducati could throw a set of olins at this thing um and create a, a street fighter v2s model but i really don't think they'd improve it that much the setup on this is absolutely pinned on perfect for this bike it doesn't really do anything wrong whatsoever We've got Diablo Rosso three tyres, uh, sorry, Diablo Rosso four tyres, so they're the new hoops for this year. And um, for a bike with around about 150 horsepower, they've been good on the road and on the track they were heating up and after about 10 minutes of track riding, they were starting to get a little bit too hot and you were starting to get some uh, slides on the back end, but nothing really too troublesome on that front. I've mentioned the braking system in terms of the electronics, the hardware, we've got a Brembo M4 uh, monoblock calipers um, on this and the brakes as well are really, really super powerful. This is a, a quite a light bike, 170 odd kgs dry, uh, fully fueled up and with oil and fluids and everything else, you're looking at just around about 200 kilograms. So there's really not much to slow down. And as I'm only sort of like 80, 85 kgs, wet through um, the braking system on it is phenomenally good i've been able to brake really really late on this monte blanco circuit into some of the slower corners um, the stability under braking is pretty good you do get the rear hopping around a little bit but you can really drive the front end into the tarmac and then push it into the next corner um, it's been seriously seriously good fun riding this around the one thing that i did note on the road earlier and this is kind of a fault of the agility of the bike because it's so agile on the road it doesn't feel like it's 200 kilograms whatsoever um, and when you hit a crosswind this thing just dances across the road all of its own accord and you really can't do much to stop it it's not really the fault of Ducati because they've created a bike which is designed to sort of carve through turns and it does do that but I did notice on the road earlier when it was a bit gusty you get a crosswind and it would almost knock you into the other lane which was a little bit unnerving 
Another thing that Ducati have changed for the Street Fighter V2 is they've slightly tweaked the ergonomics. So it's a little bit more upright than the V4. It's a little bit less involving. Uh, seat height's 835 millimeters, but the bars are just that little bit more relaxed and a little, a little less racy and sporty. I found it perfectly comfortable. I mean, I always said the Panigale um, V4 and V2s were, for sports bikes, they are actually quite comfortable machines to ride on. Um, and with those wide bars, you've got plenty of leverage. You do feel like you could sit there for a decent amount of time. The seat has been enlarged for this model, so it is a more ample seat than you would find on the Panigale V2. And that's just to accommodate bigger riders and a pillion and some luggage. And that's mated to a specific subframe for this model just to help take that extra weight. Like I said earlier on, we were riding it on track and that's where you can really, really get to grips with the electronics of any sports bike effectively. Um, and I was I was quite impressed with the Ducati ones. They, I had the wheelie control set at sort of one, just to allow a little bit of lift, but not too much. And it was just letting me wheelie the bike just for a very short amount of time, and then it'd sort of slam the front into the into the tarmac. You could turn it off. Uh, I prefer just have a little bit of a safety net because there are some undulations on this track where you wouldn't want to uh, lose the front end. And yeah, they're impressive. The slide control coming out of the final corner here at Monte Blanco. Um, it's a second gear corner, and as soon as you pass the apex, basically, you almost flat out and you can just feel the rear end sort of scrabbling around for grip and you can sort of see the traction control lights and all the electronics sort of flashing away on the dashboard as you're accelerating doing their thing. This bike is also fitted with a uh, quick shifter standard so you've got up and down quick shifter. It's a tale of two halves for me on that one. On the road earlier on, I thought it was absolutely sublime. And to be fair, we were riding in the normal road mode when we were riding on the road. And the upshifts and the downshifts were really, really smooth. I like the way that on a trailing throttle, this will still let you change gear and it will still be nice and smooth. It's not jerky, it doesn't bounce you around. When we got to the track though, I did have a couple of issues. In sport mode, the uh, gear shift seemed to be a little bit more belligerent. My little twinkle toes didn't have quite enough leverage to sort of smack the thing into gear a couple of times. Um, and when I was moving around on the bike in corners, occasionally my foot would sort of tag the gear lever and it would jump it, um, it cut the engine effectively and it would think that you were going to change gear when you weren't. If I was going to own one, I have one as a long term, I'd probably have to sort of have a little look at the gear lever and see if there's some way that I could adjust that because it is basically my feet. I don't think anybody else had that problem whatsoever. So what do we like about the uh, Ducati Street Fighter V2? Um, the handling of it is, is really, really very good. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Street Fighter V4 because I just thought it just felt exactly like a Panigale. This doesn't feel like a Panigale V2. It feels softer, it feels more compliant, it feels more accessible, and it allows you to exploit the limit a lot more than you would with a Panigale, because you've got just more control, you're more relaxed on the bike, and you don't feel like you're absolutely blowing out of your ass at the end of a track session. <laughs> Um, the engine is a, is, is a lovely unit. It's got a really nice character. It makes an absolutely stunning noise. It still surprises me that this thing gets through Euro 5 regulations when it sounds this good. It absolutely howls its way to the red line, which is always good to hear. And the comfort, finally, um, for something that has got so much, you know, it's, it's a performance motorcycle and to have a performance motorcycle that you feel like you could ride all day without any problems whatsoever is a real bonus. What don't we like? I've got to say the uh, throttle um, just in the initial opening and closing can be a little bit jerky, trying to pick up the throttle in some of the hairpin bends on the road earlier on today. And sometimes it was a little bit clumsy you either had to introduce a little bit of back brake just to smooth it or just use the clutch that's um that's a bit of a bummer um the mirrors uh, fair play to ducati because they've created a bike that you can actually see in the mirrors of which is it was pretty good going for ducati the only problem is all i could see was my elbows and it, i couldn't really get them in a decent position but they are only really there because they have to be they're not really there for any other reason <laughs>
So there we have it. That is the Ducati Street Fighter V2. This is just a shade under £15,000 when it lands in the UK. Don't worry about it. The biplane wings that aren't on this bike are an option. They're a few hundred quid and they even do carbon fibre ones. And who doesn't love a little bit of carbon fibre? Personally, I think this is going to be a really, really important bike for Ducati. I think it's probably going to be more popular than the Street Fighter V4 just because it hasn't got that tyre shredding 200 horsepower that scares the bejesus out of a lot of riders. It is accessible and it is easy to ride, but it's also exciting and it's got a heck of a lot of performance locked into that, into that package. Um, there's also not a lot else in that kind of 150 horsepower category that is this high spec in terms of the electronics, the suspension, and the brakes. You're looking at things like MT10, you're looking at GSXS 1000. I mean, it's probably going to eat them all for breakfast if you took them on road or track. Anyway, I have waffled on for plenty long enough. It is late in the evening and I definitely need a beer. I've been towed from Monte Blanco in Spain and I will see you on the next one, guys. <laughs> Yeah, sure, thank you. Okay, I'm too old. No. Oh. Ah.